very nice. Okay, ready to get going? Is everyone Hello. doing okay? Lovely lunch. Happy, feeling refreshed? Good? So yeah, I'm Molly, the marketing manager at Penny Black, and I'm joined here on stage by two incredibly exceptional individuals within e-commerce. Today we're going to be talking about some of my absolute favorite subjects from everything from the customer experience all the way through to a very secret, exciting new marketing channel you might not have heard about yet. So I'm just going to dive straight in. So this is Alex and Leone. Alex is from Bird and Blend Tea Company and Leone is from Paul Valentine. Could you both start by introducing yourself to the audience, your journey within e-commerce and what you do today? So Leone. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Leonie. I'm from Paul Valentine. We are actually a German brand, so I may be a little bit of the odd one out here today. Just wondering, has anyone heard of Paul Valentine before? Ah, oh, see. Okay. Doing not so bad over here, but I, I do have some work to do, I see. So yeah, I started at Paul Valentine a few years ago, actually as an intern, straight out of uni. I was ready to get my hands dirty, I really wanted to actually starting to do something. And I sent the founders a message. I found out that they were based in the city I was living in. And I said, hey, do you guys need, do you guys need help with anything? I need a job. And that's how I got started. And uh, yeah, from there, I took over the influencer marketing department. We started growing that very heavily. That's also how Paul Valentine actually, yeah, basically grew very heavily, especially throughout 2015 and 2019. Um, and then I started noticing that we were working in silos quite a bit. So I really wanted to optimize the processes and projects internally. And then I took over as a marketing manager and aligning all the campaigns there. And then as of last year, I'm now the growth lead. And so that means for us, at least, including also the brand and product side for that as well. We were bootstrapped until... Until earlier this year, we were just recently acquired, which now means I'm also taking over for product and portfolio. That's the short roundup, but it's been quite a journey for me there. Definitely. Nice. Alex? Cool. So I'm going to ask the same question. I'm Alex. I'm head of digital at Bird and Blend. Has anyone heard of Bird and Blend before? That's great. Front and back for some reason. No one in the middle. So yeah, we're a Brighton-based company. We are B Corp certified, and essentially we sell tea, but we sell Lots of amazing, very exciting flavoured tea. So everything from cream egg tea, which was a big hit over Easter, to some really lovely, more traditional teas, things like we have a wonderful peppermint and we also have an amazing Earl Grey tea as well. I am quite new to the business. So I joined Bird and Blend, I think it's eight weeks ago now. So very new. But I started my career at Topshop back in 2007, where I worked more within the analytics and data side of things, which was a really interesting time to work in digital because it was, well, actually there was only five people on the Topshop digital team, so that gives you an idea of the environment that we were in. And I built out a team there in terms of looking after on-site optimization and then also marketing analytics as well. Spent a decade at Topshop and from there went to Warehouse where I took a broader head of digital role. Then had a baby two and a half years ago during the pandemic, which was a great time to have a baby, by the way. And yeah, then I started with some colleagues of mine at Warehouse who founded a startup sustainable fashion brand called Albre, um, and spent two years there before eight weeks ago when I joined Bird and Blend as my first non-fashion area of digital. Yeah, exciting. Both very great journeys through e-commerce, so really excited to be interviewing today. So we're going to jump straight into the good questions. So I know someone earlier said that acquisition costs is a big thing going on in e-commerce at the moment, challenging, very difficult to navigate. So my question to start with is, as acquisition costs continue to rise, what strategies are you using to maintain a steady stream of customers and conversions? Alex, we'll start with you this time. Yeah, I think... One of the things that I've noticed since joining Bird and Blend, we've had, we've grown really quickly over the last, particularly over the last three years, and we've seen fantastic growth from acquiring new customers. But there hasn't been quite as much focus on getting the basics right. So it's great we've been acquiring customers at an amazing rate, massive year-on-year -year growth, and when they try the product, they love it. But we haven't necessarily put as much focus into just the basics of the website. So making sure that we are appealing not just to our loyal fans who are super, super passionate about Bird and Blend. They will shop with us with amazing frequency. They drink a lot of tea. 
but then also how do we not alienate or how do we make sure that we can also appeal to customers who have only just heard of us or who just came across one of our ads or seen us on TikTok and make sure that they still understand who the brand are, who the brand is, but also just can shop in a very simple, easy way. So a lot of my focus in the last eight weeks has been strict, just, just looking at getting back to basics and how can we improve that customer journey and focusing on that as much, if not more, than just trying to acquire as many customers as possible. Yeah, the power of community is a huge growth opportunity, long term, like they are there for the long haul. Yeah, yeah but I was saying to you outside, I'm always in awe of your community. It's a great asset yeah. for you guys to have. It's uh, amazing. We've got an online community called Brew Society who love our puns, love the tea puns, use them all the time. They literally, if we're launching a product, Hannah, who's our e-commerce manager in the room, so she might put it live at nine and the Brew Society will be there at eight saying, where are you? Where is this product? Where's the new, where's the new line? So it's, it's amazing to see yeah. how passionate they are. Nice. And then Leonie, yeah, the same yeah, question. I think one, one thing that you mentioned is getting your ABCs right, the foundation that you have, because you can take lots and lots of risk in marketing. You can put so much money into acquisition. Once you have your funnel set up, it goes quite easily. But acquiring a customer is one thing, but then keeping them, I think has been the main challenge for most of us at the moment. For Paul Valentine specifically, I think a lot of us may know us as a watch brand. But we we are not a watch brand anymore. We've actually ventured into accessories because we actually had to focus on customer lifetime value increases. So that obviously goes into building a community, making sure people have product that they want to buy frequently because not all of us need a watch every year, every two months. So you need to figure out on the product end, what is something that people want to buy, something they that they crave, maybe not necessarily need, but they want to have and feel represented. So you have on one, one end, obviously, the emotional part, which is being represented by people that you love. We've just started. So that was also a huge factor for us, addressing the right people. And we've grown significantly with great people in influencer marketing. But it was definitely the main challenge for us within the last years is to make sure that you have your product, your services, the logistics all in one place because keeping the customer at the end of the day is what is going to drive the profitability and make sure that you grow profitably. And that has really also to do with building that community, offering the product portfolio that is interesting to the customer. So aside from marketing, always looking at how can we leverage opportunities? How can we offer additional products on top what are cross-selling and upselling opportunities and then it gets a little more complex around from there but yeah our community manager was someone that we hired recently because we said community is the main thing especially with having such an emotional product we have a very emotional product so people really care about the details here so we really had to make sure that we really focus on every little detail of the customer journey from start to end so pre-acquisition and then to also post-purchase experience yeah which takes us very nicely oops on to my next question. Hello? Hello? That's better. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. On to my next question. Yeah. So this session, yeah, is all about, oh, slightly different to the title I've got, but all about the marketing channel you may not have heard about yet. <laughs> I thought we'd start by you both sharing a little bit more about your overall marketing mix and how you're optimizing every single t touch point across that customer journey. Leonie, I'll go to you first. Sure. Yeah. yeah, as I said, we took lots of risks and just pulling all of the eggs into influencer marketing, performance marketing, because that just has such a big lever. I think we all know this. So we really, we scale across Google, Meta, influencer marketing. That's really where the big buckets are. But recently it's been more so about profitability. So email marketing, WhatsApp, TikTok, all markets that can really help you balance that out a little bit to make sure that you can really, you can finance those buckets. So that is really the pre-acquisition part and then and making sure that the content it's really about content also here once you have your content game which is not easy a lot of people underestimate how difficult good content can be but then especially with a customer base that is so focused on details they love details that's why why do you wear a ring because you love details right you want to have every little detail right and so that's also something that we need to do in our journey so obviously acquiring acquiring them and then keeping them and then making them feel like we hear them and we understand them. And a lot of that is also part in the first touch point, that first phys physical touch point is the then the unboxing experience. So obviously that is packaging, but then also making them feel like they're part 
of the brand and part of the community and which is why we started working with Penny Black one and a half years ago. And so we first started venturing into personalization, having them unbox and having little details in the unboxing experience. So that is the first little add into really helping them have a great experience and feeling feeling like at home at our brand. Alex, same question? Yeah, so in terms of the overall marketing mix, we're spending in all the places that you'd expect, Google and Meta being two of the big areas. We're also trialing, we're doing quite a lot of testing within TikTok as well, which has been really interesting in terms of what's been performing. So that's both from a paid ads point of view, but then also from lives, TikTok lives as well. There's been quite a lot of investment in that. So to, to make sure that we're doing it right, we've set up a studio, we've had to we've got some amazing team members who happen to be amazing at presenting on TikTok and we've really seen some interesting successes through that but also with the paid media as well I think what I found quite interesting there is I made an assumption that what works on Instagram for example would be the same as what works on TikTok which absolutely isn't the case and that's definitely a channel that we're going to continue to test and learn on as, as well as the bigger channels in terms of Google and Meta and I think they're the ones from uh, uh, introducing people to a new brand, particularly the TikTok lives where we have that opportunity to actually talk through the product and talk about the smells and the tastes, which are very difficult to get across through other marketing channels. But then in terms of retention, the big investment and the main thing that we're really focusing on at the moment is our Penny Black literature that we put within our, within our parcels. And what we've been using that for is to really be hyper personalized at the point that they're most engaged with the brand because for us we have an incredibly high amount of SKUs so we have well over a thousand lines on the site and that goes from everything from a very traditional pure grade matcha product which is unflavored and all the way to the to some chocolate that is flavored with chili and then all of our teas in between and so the way that we would talk to our pure grade matcha customers compared to our cream egg tea customers should and is very different and we don't want that experience to be the same for them as they open their parcel so what penny black has enabled us to do is to be very personalized so a first time match a customer for example will get a very different printout and flyer to a loyal regular tea customer so it's been a really interesting one for us we've built up quite a hierarchy of what is the right message for each customer yeah the right message at the right time that moment they're fully engaged at the unboxing moment yeah and we've only got a couple minutes so I want to end with a little bit for everyone in the audience what would be one piece of advice you'd give to other e-commerce brands here for making the most of what they've already got this year I'll leave yeah go you look like you're ready <laughs> Does it have to be one? Can it be three? <laughs> yeah, it can be three very succinctly. <laughs> I think one one big thing is once once you've taken your risks, make sure you have your ABCs right. I think we've touched on this earlier. Um, make sure your product services, logistics, everything is spot on because marketing is great, but if you cannot keep your customer, it's just going to be a very expensive ride for you. Part two for me would definitely be listen to the customer and think I, I, I hate this term, but think outside the box and we really need to get creative. Whether that be, you cannot just do promos. People don't care for discounts anymore that much as they used to. You really need to get creative, find new ways of addressing customers and find ways to be playful. And then also try to avoid dependencies on one channel mix. I have one little anecdote from that last year's Black Friday. One of our Google servers crashed. Yeah, woof. That was quite, so obviously it wasn't our fault. It was something that all of our, a lot of brands were affected by. But if we did have a lot of, all of our buckets in there, that would have been a very dark day for us. So definitely try to avoid being dependent on one channel only and have a good diversified mix in order to pay for those risks that you want to take in the fun, fun times. Yeah, great advice. Alex? I agree with all of the above. And I think I'd just add just the not underestimating of the importance of fans as well. So that's something that I've learned even in the last eight weeks, how the impact of your biggest fans, even if it's just a small community, the wider impact that can have in terms of free marketing, whether that's through referrals or whether that's through just that brand being visible to people who have never heard 
of the brand before, what that can do from an awareness point of view. And building that advocacy, I think, has been really important for us as a brand. Advocacy is king, yeah. I think that's all we've got time for, right, Tash? Yeah, so I'll hand back over to you. Thank you so much for being our guest today and travelling in. Thank you for having us. Thank you for us. Thank you, thank you guys so much. Why don't we pass these back to people to look at? Just while we reset the stage, I'm just going to pass these back for you to look at, which are the Penny Black inserts, because I'm a big fan of Penny Black and how it allows you to customise at the unboxing moments, customise and personalise and track revenue at that unboxing moment.